Hello. Good evening. Good evening, Herkabud. Good evening. Hmm. Happy Singles Day. Indeed, indeed. Happy Singles Day. It's all it's overrated, this Valentine's nonsense, isn't it? <laughs> Hello, Nagisa. Welcome. Good evening. I don't know what's happening, but the past couple of streams, my... Uh, something, something is not quite right with the connection. I thought it was the internet yesterday, but I tested the internet. It's not the internet, and it keeps... The bitrate keeps dipping. And I'm at, running at like 13% drop frames, which is extremely high. So I don't know what the hell's going on. Mind you, I haven't updated OBS for probably about a year. And it keeps saying, do you want to upgrade? Do you want to update? Update? And I'm like, nah, it's all right. Maybe I should update it to the latest version. Perhaps there's some kind of an issue. But anyway, I don't think there's too uh, much of a problem on your side. But if there is, let me know. <laughs> Not that I can do anything about it. Uh, right. First Valentine's since 2017 that I am single. Ooh. Well. Join the club. Single ready to mingle, is that what I say? Casting more fan, good evening, welcome. Uh, well, before we kick off, I, those of you that are here, I'll uh, give you the rundown. Obviously, I've got the, uh, got the romantic vanilla candle burning in the background, you know, to set the scene. I've got the pink lighting as well, you know, to set the scene. And I got bought uh, by my mother, you know, bless her, um, unexpectedly, out of the blue, you know, just to completely put the bloody final nail in the coffin that is my diet. Uh, she bought me a bottle of port. So uh thought I'd treat myself this evening. Valentine's Day, why not? I'll just go the whole hog and have everything. Just like I've, I've had a spa, I've had some, I've had a very unhealthy day. So, uh, so yes, um, and yeah, everything is set for a re for a relaxing, romantic evening in by myself with you, of course. Uh, so that's lovely, jubbly. Good evening, Genghis. Welcome. We've got the sound of the water. It's all very lovely. What more do you need on Valentine's Day? You know. I seem to recall, if memory serves me well, that on this day last year, Valentine's Day 2020, I was streaming, um, what's it called? Deus, uh, Disco Elysium. I streamed Disco Elysium uh, on Valentine's Day last year. I, re I recall it very well. It was the session where I did the flying spin kick. Uh, it was, uh, it's now legendary, you know, goes down in folklore. You see this? You can't see it. I'm not going to. But I've got a. Uh, I've got. Can I, uh, you can't. But can, I can't get it in the camera shot. But I basically got a slash down the side of my finger, where I eagerly was opening the bottle of port, and the the wrapping came off, and sliced my finger. So I got like a uh, a rather. It's not painful, but I've got a bit of a. It's not quite a paper cut, but it's a, a sharp, sort of metal wrapping of a of a port bottle cut. Anyhow, uh, we're streaming this a little bit earlier than usual, uh, six o'clock, because I am having uh, I'm having a uh, a buffet uh, a buffet dinner this evening that my mum is preparing. Um, so that's I'm having that at nine o'clock. So I, I I can't stream uh, after nine. So I thought well I'll start a bit early. We'll finish early. Keep the stream to about you know two two and three quarters hours by the time I've finished nattering and whatnot. Mm. Fantastic. Ooh, lovely. Lovely. Almost feels like Christmas. I only ever drink port at Christmas. This is the first time I've ever drunk port outside of Christmas. So it, uh, it feels like Christmas. Just, just need a couple of uh, you know pork pies and a bit of cheese. Uh, right then, so let's uh, let's dive in then and see where we uh, see where we end up today. Turn the volume up. Drink mountain walk tea to quickly walk in known location to known locations. What drink 
So mountain walk tea could be a, what, a fast, a, is it fast travel? Fast travel mechanism? I don't know if you've seen the Skyrim playthrough, but this is going to be very similar. I ain't fast traveling anywhere. Could tell you now. Oh yes, another attempt to curtail my diet. Yes, a, a buffet tea, a buffet tea, with all the unhealthy pastries, you know, pies and sausage rolls and all the unhealthy stuff, washed down with some little mini uh, patisserie uh, tarts. As I said, this week has been a calamitous uh, week. Uh, my resolve has basically buckled, buckled and waned. There's no motivation for me to really, uh, really stick to this diet. I've done very well for four, for five weeks, but uh, normally if I'm losing weight, it's because of football, to keep in shape for football. The lighter I am at football, the more nimble I am on my feet, the easier it is on my knees and ankles. So there's a, there's a, there's a reason to do it. If you can go out and party, you know, when you wish to do so, you know, go on a bit of a jaunt into the city centre or to Manchester or wherever, there may be a reason to wish to look pretty trim then as well. I'll leave it at that. But uh, there's, you can't do anything. You can't go nowhere. I can't play football. So what is the reason to lose weight at the moment? Who, you know, my own vision in the mirror is offended. My eyes are offended by my own portly figure. But, uh, you know, who else is? <laughs> Not even my colleagues at work because everything is done by uh, Microsoft Teams without the cameras on, so nobody sees me. So there is no reason other than my own mindset, which is, as I said, is uh, is buckling. Right. I like the music in this game. I like the mu I like I like this game in general. It's uh, very very. Uh, sedate and there's probably going to be a bit more to it than it first seems but so far it is certainly so good <sighs> the little tinkly little musical pieces all very nice so I seem to recall that we had enough um, glow. I keep wanting to call them seashells. They're glowstones. They, I, I seem to remember I had enough glowstones to be able to unlock the uh, toll bridge. So we're going to be venturing into pastures new today. So yes, this is well and truly a proper peaceful Sunday stream. It is indeed. Unless this game suddenly decides to ramp it up a level or two, <laughs> unexpectedly. Let yourself go. It will give you something to do after lockdown. I don't want to go too far. I don't want to go too far one way. Uh, <clears throat> but, uh, yeah. I'm going to have a good couple of weeks next couple of weeks because I've got nothing really major planned. So I'm going to have a good couple of weeks just to bring it back a little bit and then ease off a little touch. Just kind of ease off the accelerator a bit. Just kind of going cycles. Two weeks on, one week off. That's probably the best way to do it. Keep the motivation up. Right then. So it's um, 5 or 6 p.m. Oh, yes, it's too late to go wandering. We were going to go to bed. <laughs> I didn't go to bed uh, after we finished the session. So we are going to sleep until morning. With our lovely, lovely, comfy bed. I mean, it doesn't look that comfy to me. Nice cushions, but... Uh, the duvet it looks a little bit like it would, uh, I don't know, chafe a little bit perhaps. It looks a bit rough around the edges. Right, considering how cold it is outside as well. Bloody hell. Speaking of the cold, I did mention yesterday that I was uh, relatively cold all day yesterday. Today I've been not so bad, still a little bit nippy, but I've, I've solved the problem um, by putting on two sets of... Um, bottoms and two pairs of socks had my dressing gown on all day so uh, I've been not too bad today but it comes to something when you have to wear two layers in your own house you know something's amiss something is amiss ah, right and off we go so feel free to ask questions talk away in the chat it's an opportunity it's a very slow paced game it's an opportunity for me to to chew the fat with you guys. This is, this is all what it's about. Just enjoying each other's company. 
Yeah, this game definitely reminds me of Oblivion. Somebody, I can't remember where I, where I read it, probably on Twitter somewhere actually, but it was I, I read that it was very, like a, had a, an Oblivion feel and I completely, completely get that. It does feel very Oblivion-esque. Right. Let's go and see... Uh, something I want to see first. Something I just want to tre uh, check out before we head into uh, to the toll bridge. 13 in London. When? Tomorrow? Just flipping up 13 here at the minute. Bloody hell, it's minus 3 I think it is. Minus 2, minus 3 at the moment. Bloody freezing. Right, now, before we go down there, I just want to check something, because if you recall in the last session, we did... Um, I, love, I love the jump feature. Look how high we jump. I mean, is it barely like... <laughs> it's not even worth doing it, is it? <laughs> We're like, oh... I mean, I'm no athlete, but I mean, I can jump higher than that. <laughs> anyway, the reason why we're here is we came across a, a piece of... There we are, look. We came across this rug with some books and some cushions there. And I just wanted to check it out. Because... There is somebody here. There's nothing like a good book on a day such as this. Actually, books are the perfect way to spend any day. Do you enjoy reading? I do. I'm glad to hear that. Perhaps I can share my favourite books with you sometime. My favourite books are the ones that inspire me to write myself. How about you? Uh, I mean, I do like reading, but I'm not much of a writer. More of a painter. Oh, I see. We creatives... Me a writer, you a painter. We've got to stay inspired. Best way I've found is to drink many, many cups of tea. Always gives me a boost. Speaking of writing, if you find any feathers around here, I'd happily buy them. I'm constantly losing my quills. I figure three should do it. I actually have three feathers already. I've been picking up loads of stuff off the floor randomly. So, uh, here you go. Oh, wonderful. Hopefully this is enough to last me a while. Thank you very much. I do hate scouring the forest floor for these. If you find any more, I'll pay you one close to a piece. Is there something else? Okay, so he will he will buy our feathers for one glowstone apiece. We'll keep them for now, just in case they're useful for other things. But uh, we can always remember to come back and sell them to him if we're short of a glowstone or two. Anyway, in the meantime, we'll uh, just check out what he has to say uh, about these topics. I was going to say an elephant. <laughs> I was going to say an elephant. Lindau used to be right on the river. After I'd finished the conversation. Like destroyed most of the town. After that, the townspeople relocated to the coast. Many of the folk from old Lindau moved there after the mudslide. The library there is of a historic note. So there's a library there? And there's a bakery there. I know which one takes precedence. I think the dark workers use fabric sacks with incoming and outgoing shipments. You might ask one of them. Oh, didn't mean to ask that. Sorry about that. Ah, that would be Azad. A brilliant, brutally honest, and highly misunderstood man. Undoubtedly too curt for his own good. Perhaps that's why many Lindau folk found it difficult to maintain amicable relations with him. That building was part of the original town of Lindau. I've heard a ghost has taken up residence inside. If you're interested in an adventure, it's a lovely spot for a nighttime stroll. Yeah, about that. We still need to figure out how we how best to venture out in the night. I think there's probably two ways, maybe. Um, if you get some kind of warm clothing, perhaps. Although I don't. That might not be a possibility. I, I don't seem to recall an option to put clothing on at the moment, but you never know. The other alternative is probably to drink something, like some form of tea or some sort of drink that will give you a bit of a kind of a warmth for a certain length of time. I'm thinking that's probably more likely. 
but before you can check out this abandoned tower, we're going to need the ability to uh, to venture in the darkness and the cold. That's where I live. When I'm not camping, my house was the only thing standing after the mudslide. Ah. There was one house still standing, and we went inside and we looted it. <laughs> so, uh, we might just gloss over that bit. Moving all those books just seems like too much trouble. Besides, what could be more fun than living in a ghost town? To be fair, I am quite fascinated by ghost towns myself, actually. I'm quite fascinated by abandoned buildings. I've probably said this before, but... Be quite, it would be quite cool. Maybe not living, but, uh, you know. I certainly did. Did you manage to take a peek inside? Uh, well... <laughs> we're an honest, we're an honest sort. Yeah, the curtain, was, the curtain was open, as was the door. Oh, good. I hope you found something to read that was of interest to you. Yeah, a book about a fox eating eggs. I seem to remember. Is there something else? Uh, no. Um, who are you? What's he? What was he called? Eunice. Goodbye, Eunice. Right. How many feathers do we have? We have five feathers. So we'll keep. As I said, we'll keep those for now. So Lindowian, Lindowian, Lindo, Lindowian brew imbued with a quaint, dreamy glimmer of its seaside. I'm thinking he just mentioned about drinking stuff to give yourself inspiration. I think this is probably an inspiration-based drink. If I was to have a guess. Do you think you'll revisit Last of Us 2 on your new PC just to take a look around some of the new, nicer abandoned bits? Oh no, I'm not playing that game again. <laughs> no, thank you. There are certain games that I will play again um, on my new PC. Uh, I think I've mentioned, uh, obviously Red Dead Redemption uh, 2 is on my list. Uh, Mass Effect Legendary Edition, it's a Obviously not an old, it's an old game, but it's been remastered, so it's kind of 50-50 if it counts as a, as a revisit. And um, Kingdom Come Deliverance is another game on my list to uh, play again. Because the first time I played it, I had to play it in, uh, I had to play it in 1920 by 1080 Because it wouldn't work on my computer in 1440p. And there's loads of DLC and mods and stuff that have come out since I last played it. So it will be, it will be a pretty new experience for me to play that game again. To be fair. Right. So I think it's time for us to uh, pay the toll of sixty glowstones. Sixty glowstones. And look at that, as if by magic, we can traverse the bridge and enter into a new world. So we'll follow the path uh, to get to Nava first, I think. Uh, and then once we're happy that we've got to Narva and we've done a couple of things there, when the mood takes us, we'll kind of just go off the off the path and venture around into the wooded areas and see what we can stumble across. Don't forget, we're always looking for scenes to paint as well, so... Oh, look at this little... Th it's a house or a built... How cool is that? Built into the... Uh, into the rock. That is cool. I like that. No, oh, hello there. Mind the plants underfoot. What can I do for you? Uh, nice shades. <laughs> I spend a lot of time studying and documenting new plant life. Just yesterday, I believe I discovered a new sort of lily pad.
Can I just ask that? Why is it? Yeah, I, I don't. I wish the game would black out the text that you've already done. We've got great plant diversity, and I can always get imported teas from the storehouse. Okay. We've also got more wild bloom sacks than anywhere else. Lindo, famous for its tea and its bloom sacks. Believe it or not, I've never been. I'm not sure Bojan would care much for the bustle. As far as I know, he left Lindo a long time ago and never returned. Unfortunately, he and I did not get along terribly well. Hmm. I like to go walking over there. It's nice to take in the sea air from time to time. It was destroyed such a long time ago. I was only a child, so I barely remember what it looked like. Mind the plants underfoot! Mind the plants, I will indeed, sir. Apart from when I'm picking them. Oh, look at that! Is that back a... Very much like a penny farthing style bike. Owner's ha is it was he called owner? Oh, and there's a book there as well. I'm missing a lot of stuff here. Hello again. Hello, just checking what your name. I do for you. I should really take people's names down. Mind the plants underfoot. When uh, when I speak to them. Sorry about that, Mr. Owner. I'm just uh, gonna check a look in your house if you don't mind. A botanist's guide to East Shade, third edition. Crassula netantis, commonly known as Bloomsack, is a native to the Lindo region of East Shade. The blossoms of the Bloomsack are fully enclosed and filled with a mixture of air, viscous sap, and seeds. Upon reaching full size, blossoms fall to the ground and split open, allowing for reseeding. If prepared correctly, the sap may be consumed as a beverage, often referred to as bloom sack tea. The blossoms develop a hard skin when harvested, making them ideal for use as flotation devices. Mm, multi purpose. Bloom sack. Oh, the cat. Look at that. Looking all sweet and innocent. Don't you give me that. Mm, I know better than to trust cats. Oh, look at this. Nice crackling fire, cooking pot, some books. Two beds, but there is only one of him. I'm not sure I won't mind me taking some st some stuff. It's fine. I'll leave his candles though. Never take another man's candles. It's an unwritten rule. Okay. Good day, sir. Ooh. Oh. That would be the bloom sack flotation device they were talking about. La, la, la. Uh, excuse me? Uh, are you all right? Of course. <laughs> uh, what are you sitting on? It is a bloom sack, Ah, yes. And did you make it? I did. Um, will you, will you teach me how? For reasons? I might, but only if you meet the right requirements. And what requirements would they be? My only requirement oh. is that you be my friend. One of my best friends, to be exact. Well, uh... Perhaps we should get to know each other a bit first. You know, we've only just met. It's a bit early for best friendship. I understand. Yeah. 
quite reasonable. Hmm. Let us begin learning about one another. Okay. Is your favourite colour orange or yellow? Neither. My favourite colour is pink. Or maybe deep red. Hmm, I see. Now, now, if you had to choose between eating slugs or cakes, which would you eat? Oh, that's a tough one. Let me just think for a second. Hang on. Hang on. I think it might have to be cakes. Maybe I can make you some slug cakes. No, no but perhaps you can't. This next one will be tricky. If you saw a frog stranded all alone on a lily pad, mm. what would you do? I would uh, leave it be because surely that's what frogs do. They sit on lily pads and they're fine in water for the most part. That is rather heartless. Oh. Don't let the frogs say you speaking that way. Okay. I feel as if I have come to know you very well. Would you agree that we can be friends now? Um. Yeah, go on then. Just kind of, you know, hold off on the slug cakes bit. Oh, wondrous. Here. Yeah. Now we can sit on rafts together. You'll need some twine to keep it all together. I don't know how to make that, but owner has a lot of it. Thank you, Bojan. You also need wax, oh. and that's very hard to find. Sometimes there's steel candles, but don't tell owner. I was just saying that is one of the most heinous crimes you could ever do. Stealing candles is no go, man. Right, apparently we have got a new schematic. Let me just check out the, my crafting station. So we can craft, uh, now we can craft a raft. Slow and can only be helmed in shallow waters. It fares better than other watercraft upstream. So we need sealant, uh, we need a stick, we need twine, and we need 10 white bloom sacks. And with all of that, we can craft a balloon sack raft. For what purpose? I do not yet know. But we can craft one. Knowledge is power, they say. So the knowledge of knowing how to do it is enough power for me. Right. Hang on. Hello again. Twine. I overheard your conversation with Bojan. <sighs> yes. He'll be so excited to have you as a friend. He's a very special individual. There's mm. no one who loves rafting as much as he does. Though he can be difficult at times, he's a kind soul. I appreciate your cordialness. Lovely. Um, he said that you might be able to tell me how to make twine. Ah, a blossoming botanist, I see. To start, you'll need some roots. roots. You can find them at the bases of trees. Mm -hmm. I can show you how to make twine, but it is a process. I see you're a painter. I would so love some artwork in my home. Ah. I'm quite partial to sandy beaches. Hmm. What do you say? If you make me a painting, I'll teach you how to make twine. I'll see what I can do. I look forward to seeing your work. Mind the plants underfoot. Right, so we're not going to go any further forward because we're going to go all the way back now because he wants to, uh, uh, he wants a picture of a sandy beach and, well, a sandy beach, we can paint for him. Owner is willing to show me how to make twine if I paint him a sandy beach. Okay, so uh, we're going to go back to where we actually first started the game because that was a sandy beach, I think. So... Because we know where a sandy beach is, we might as well do it now, is my kind of kind of thought process there. So we'll go, we'll, we'll paint him a nice little sandy beach. In fact... I haven't created any paintings or canvases yet. What happened to my... Um, what happened to my painting of the... Shipwreck, because the captain didn't take that, did she? She must have done. 
Because I've got no paintings left. Strange. Anyway. Uh, run is the left bumper. Hang on. I wonder if these respawn, these um, things, eventually. Unless I just missed them the first time down, which is a distinct possibility. There could well be other sandy beaches, but uh, why is there a chicken sat in the middle of the path? Hello, Hank. Good evening. Welcome. So now about sell some bloom sacks while we're here. You know, if we're going to be making rafts out of them, we should probably uh, nab as many as we can. Okay. So we head back down towards the beach, hoping... Yeah, look, there's that's, that's a sandy beach, isn't it? It's got to be. It's got to be classed as a sandy beach. In fact, before we go anywhere, can we uh, craft ourselves uh, another canvas? Do we have one canvas available? How many canvases do we have? None. Okay, so we've got one canvas. Uh, sandy beach? What do we reckon, folks? Is this sandy beachy, en sandy beachy enough? I'd say so. If I pitch up here and kind of paint... About something like that. Something like that. You've got the beach, you've got some rocks, you've got the horizon, and a skewiff ship in the background, and a barrel. The perfect sandy beach scene, surely. Yeah, I, I think that's a good sandy beach scene. Something like that. I think so. Let's try that. Let's try that. So we're going to select pan canvas to paint. Let's, uh, get this all. Sorted. Sandy beach. Looks good to me. It looks good to me. Bingo. Look at that. Fantastic. Look at that. One of my finest works. Sandy beachy. He'll love it. It'll look lovely in his house next to his candle. It'll look fantastic. Oh, the eclipse is just beginning to happen, I think. Is that... Uh, that's, is it? I think it might be, you know. The sun is going behind the moon again. Which means... The sky might turn pink again. It might be a good opportunity to try and nab ourselves a painting. Yeah, look at that, it's going behind, you see. So last time this happened, I just missed it. So I wanted to try and see if I could get a decent shot of the uh, of the kind of pinky sky, but I also wanted to get the, the this 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 uh, port town in. So, it's difficult. I kind of wanted to get there, everything in. Maybe something, something like this. You've got, the bit, you've got the bit of that on that side. You've got the sky, you've got the, the outlook. It's not perfect, but it, it's, just, it's, it's, it's good enough, I think. Let's do it quickly before we lose... Uh, before we lose our... So let's paint this. Let's just knock it down a touch. So we get the fountain in. Okay. 
Okay, uh, that's fun. Let me get this up. Right, let's have a look at this. Yeah, no, it's not bad. It's not bad. It's not bad. No, 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 I don't want to paint over it. Are you taking the Michael? How do we look at our paintings? P to look at our paintings. All the paintings that you create actually go into a folder uh, in your Steam in your Steam library, your Steam um, games folder. So all of these paintings can be used as uh, desktop backgrounds and things. Okay, excellent. Can't paint too many things willy nilly though, because uh, I think it takes your inspiration when you, and not to mention canvases. So you, you can't go too mad painting every last thing you see. But, you know, the odd thing for your own personal amusement is certainly going to be uh, doable, I think. And there, there, there he is, look, Mr. Sun, coming back round the other side. Okay, here we go. What a lovely sandy beach you've painted. Would you be willing to give it away for the opportunity to learn? <sighs> yes, of course I will. I didn't go all that way for nothing. This is splendid. It will be the prized piece of my sitting room. Now, here's how to make twine. To be fair, I won't mind that in my sitting room. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. I do say so myself. Mind the plants underfoot. Okay, so we've got the schematic then to make twine. So how do we do that? So to make twine, you just use roots. So if we make um, two lots of twine, we have a stick, we have twine, we have the white bloom sacks. All we are missing is the sealant, which I think you need wax to make sealant, if uh, my memory serves me well from the conversation with uh, Chappie over there. Hello, good friend. Bojan, that's it. Bojangles. Boja Mr. Bojangles. I'll come back when I've crafted it. I just need to make some sealant first. Right, onwards. On our grand adventure. And now this is another little house. I love how quaint and unique the houses are. It is very nice. It's like... Look at that. Now who lives in a house like this? Uh, Annika does apparently. <laughs> Challenge Annika. Oh, hello there. I saw some birds flying around a few nights ago. They were so graceful. I especially like the ones that do this. Ooh, ooh. What a fun way to talk. Ooh. A rare bird. All right. Fancy, fancy city folk, but they do buy my pots. Bye now. Bye. I, you don't mind if I just take these uh, boxes off your hands? Do you? Of course you don't. Thank you. Bye. Is it me, or is there a few people around here who've got a screw loose? <laughs> a couple of screws loose. God bless them. Right, uh a rare bird um, a bird with a distinct hoot hmm we shall have to listen out for that I reckon she'd probably want a painting of it at some point Eshadian black thistle protected under the rule of land do not pick pluck or pull no no they're just very special they are indeed the special ones so you cannot 
pick up the Eshadian thistles. Okay. But how do I know what a th what, how do I know what a th uh, an Eshadian black thistle is? Because they're black and they look like a thistle. Oh right, yeah. I see. Good logic there. Anyway, um, I'm gonna just go off the path here for a second and uh, take a quick look at this tower thing here. Just keeping track of time because we don't want to get caught. Oh, wow! Oh, look at that middle tower. Middle tower, and we've got like a little bay down there. A view of the mountains, the sun, the moon. This is actually not a bad little scene to paint at some point, but uh, it's kind of cool. Hello, Holla. Ooh, we are up at the top of the tower. Look at that in the distance. That's probably uh, Narva. With buildings that tall. Kind of just... W I know that I need to get to Narva, and I know that time is ticking, but you know what? I'm just kind of getting lost in exploration, really. Just having a wander... And why not? Why be confined to uh, where we think we should be going when there is a load of wonderment waiting for us? We only need to seek it. What the hell is happening here? What the good grief? Uh, I can't get on to... Oh, there you go. Good afternoon, my dear. And, uh, How's the fishing going? Everything okay? Yeah, well, fantastic. Yes, I think so as well. I think there's... The, the, <laughs> Even if we don't actually paint anything, I think we could uh, take lots of screenshots. <laughs> Because I say painting takes your inspiration, but uh, there's, there's, there's screenshots are plenty to be had here, isn't there? There really is. Okay. Well, I've got a feeling we may we may well come back down here at some point. I don't want to get too far diverted from my destination because time is ticking, and by about sort of seven o'clock p.m., the cold will set in again. So we could probably do it getting to Narva a little bit sharpish. Otherwise, we're going to end up uh, stranded. Look at that tree. Tree house. Look at that. Goodness me. Right, back on the path, quickly. <laughs> There's a time and place for exploring, and now this is not it. We need to get to where we're going. But we will certainly be coming back here and letting ourselves loose. Going wherever our eyes take us. <clears throat> ah, so maybe I, I thought this might have been Narva, but it's not. It's just a house that's on top of a rock, rather bizarrely. I do wish to go up to the house on the rock because it looks uh, very intriguing. Right, Lindo, Narva. So not Narva that way. Ah, yes, I see it now. I'm pretty busy if you couldn't tell. I've got all these trails to maintain, tourists to wrangle, animals to nurture, plants to relocate. I'll be lucky if I ever get to take another break in my whole life. 
Sounds like a tough job, but as they say, someone's got to do it. Yeah, it is. At least someone understands what goes into making a national park. Uh, I'm just really stressed today. I get a sense. Oh, and I've also got to go rescue a stupid water fox. As if I didn't already have enough work to do. A uh, water fox. They're aquatic rodents, essentially. Like to live in watery caves. People think they're adorable, but in my opinion, they're just wretched. My responsibility here is maintaining the trails. That's why I was hired. These water foxes are a huge thorn in my paw, and they distract me from my real tasks. My partner was the one who took care of the water foxes. Now he's gone, and I have no idea to handle these animals. I've been trying to trap one all day. Tried every type of bait into the moon. Uh, yeah, where did your partner go? He wanted to see the world. I don't blame him for that. But he could have at least left some instructions for taking care of these hard animals. And why didn't you go with him? I like the world here just fine. I like the trails, the trees. I don't want to see anything else. Besides, what would happen to this park if I was gone? Somebody else will probably do your job. Uh, what will you do about the water fox? I've already wasted so much time trying to catch him. I really can't spend another day on this. I think it's officially a lost cause. Okay. Uh, poor water fox. Yeah, he'll probably die. And his kits won't last long without him either. I guess it's sad, but the trails need maintenance. Can I go and see them? I'm not really supposed to let visitors get so close to the wildlife, but I guess it doesn't matter at this point. The water foxes are living in a cave, not more than a hundred paces from me. A wounded water fox. Oh, we need to go and help the poor thing. Mmm, city folk. It's like they've never seen a trail before. Always trampling through the foliage like animals. So we've got a rare bird, and now we've got a wounded water fox. The animal needs help, but he can't manage to lure it. Hmm, interesting. Oh, hang on. Hang on. We read a book in the old Lindau. Wasn't that a water fox? Or was it a regular fox? It was eating eggs. I'm wondering if it's eggs that it might want. But he said it was a rodent, and rodents aren't like big things, are they? Rodents are quite small. Hmm. Maybe I'm barking up the wrong tree. Speaking of trees, that's a rather interesting tree. Wait a minute, wait a minute. It, that can't be the tree that my mother asked me to paint, can it? She wanted me to paint something, didn't she? She wanted me to paint something, right? Where's my quest marker? Mother's last wishes. She wanted me to paint four of her favourite places. A giant tree. The Tiffmore Bluffs. The highest peak. And a view from the top of the common tower in the big city. Now that's a rather large tree. Could that be it? Already? That looks like it could be it. To, that, to my eyeballs, that looks like a large tree. I'm gonna paint it and see what happens. Where can I get a good view of this? Without any... There, that's not bad, is it? That's what... I mean, the guy there is in the way, but... Uh, let's try this. Let's try this. I need to make a new canvas. Right, here we go. Mm, didn't mean to do that, but hey-ho, let's just crack on. Right, let's carry on. Uh, paint. Looks like a faraway tree. Where's... Why is that down as two? Did I make two or one? Where's the other one gone? Good evening, Antoine. Right, let's crap. Let's just. We could crop him out and maybe do it something like that, but. 
Man, there's more than... Look, there's people in the distance there as well. I just want to see whether this is going to do anything. I can always paint over this if it's not the right thing. I can always paint over it. So let's just get, let's just get the tree in the centre shot here. Something like that. I mean, it's not, it's not perfect, but it's this. You've painted one of Mother's most beloved places. To keep it safe, preserve her memory in the painting menu. It is the tree. Eh? So what did it say? To preserve her memory, do what? I'm confused. So I've painted the tree, but I don't have a painting of the tree. And if I go to... It's also not... Doesn't seem to be coloured in at the side. Have I done it? Have I done that right? Have I done that right? I don't understand. I'm confused. Maybe you've done it wrong. Huh? Well, you all saw. You're all witnesses. I painted it, right? Oh, it's there! I've got to pick it up! Oh, my stupid fool! <laughs> How many glasses of port have I had? It's here, there it is. Dear, dear, dear. Right, there it is. And it's now coloured in. Preserve her memory in the painting menu. How do we do that? So you go to the if you go to the painting menu... Which painting will be, be will best commemorate Mother? Okay, so we know that this is the right tree. The question I have, though, is this the best shot of the tree we can possibly get? I mean, we can probably preserve this and it'll probably be fine. But, you know, being the perfectionist painter that we are, could we get a better shot of this tree? It took a lot of inspiration for us to do this. Seems a shame to waste, to waste it. But I do question whether this is the best shot of this tree. Could we get a closer shot? As a close-up shot? I don't know. I mean, the moon is there, the, the foliage is there. I mean, it's not bad. It's front and centre. A nice moon-to-tree to sky ratio. Hmm. I think you might be right. Let's commemorate. Let's, let's see what we can do to commemorate this. Oh yeah, I wonder if we could get it, get the eclipse in it. You can always get the eclipse in a different shot. Right, let's com can we com let's, let's just test this. Let's commemorate this thing. Let's just see what happens. So we click on that. Which painting will best commemorate Mother? Ah, right. Well, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to commemorate it. I'm not going to do it just yet. We've got a picture of the tree. We may come back for a uh, for a different kind of shot, yeah. Eclipses, sunsets, different angle. Maybe take two or three pictures of the tree. Pick the best one, you know. Never accept your first. Never accept the first, you know. Always give yourself a choice where possible, at least. Anyway, it's six twenty-eight. We're gonna end up. Uh, we're gonna end up having to go back to. Uh, I wonder if we can sleep in here. <laughs> Have you got a bed, mate? I'm gonna freeze me. I'm gonna freeze my tits off. Oh, this could be an inn. This could be an inn. Hello. Welcome to the Castrol's Eyrie, providing a warm bed for travelers and tourists for just two glowstones a night. Two? Are you in need of a room tonight? I am. How, you, how did you guess? I would like to take a room after I've had a bit of a chinwag with you first, though. What do you think, Alindo? You might have met my old friend Nika. Oh, yes. She runs the inn over there. Yes. We used to get into a lot of trouble together. Hmm. 
And what do you, what about Nava? It's a shiny kind of place. You heading there now? That's a Northern Irish accent. I am. I heard there's an art supplies store. Seems like something you might like. Well, it's a bit of a muddled accent, though. I don't think it's a native Northern Irish person that did the voice acting here. I could be wrong. I'll take a room, please. All right, then. It's just up the stairs, second door on the right. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Well, before we do go into Betty Buys, we will use what is left of our time to just have a last little bit of a nosy around the area. Because why not? I reckon it's about. Se I reckon at precisely 7 p.m. <laughs> we'll start feeling the effects. Oh, look at these two over here! Quick, 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 quick! Look at this. They are obviously looking at a lovely view. Are they? No, not really. They're just meditating, maybe? Sorry to interrupt your meditations, but uh, I thought I'd come and see what you were all gawping at. I mean, it's not bad. We've got the, the sea there. To be fair, if, if, if in real life, if I was to have a picnic on top of here, I wouldn't really complain, you know? It would be rather pleasant. And you can just about see a ship down there. Is that, is that is that actually a is that a ship I don't know I don't know I don't know can we get to the uh, large tree before we end up uh... <gasps> look at the moon it looks like it looks like earth <laughs> oh uh oh uh oh. I'm going inside. I'm going in, I'm going in, I'm going in. Chill out, chill out, chill out. Whoa. Hoo hoo. See what you want to do, Paul Vinicius. You want to put two pairs of socks on and two pairs of jogging bottoms. Then you'll be right as rain. Fish of the Fellstream River. The scales of the ultramarine minnow were once ground down to create a deep blue pigment used in paint. These fish consume nearly anything aside from fish and have been found to eat plants and even eggs. The motud trout, or thunder trout, leaps from water at high speeds before crashing back down. It is believed that the fish do this to catch flies, but it's been surmised that they may also be engaging in play. When entire hovers of thunder trout do this at once, it creates a rumble that can be felt from land. Thunder trout prey on ultramarine minnows and prefer to live in river waters. The dry-mouthed sandfish swallows vast quantities of silt, allowing it to rest heavily on the riverbed, preying on thunder trout. The sandfish emits a burst of sand as prey approaches, disorientating the smaller fish and consuming it along with the displaced sand. One sandfish has gained particular notoriety in East Shade for being a menace to fisher folk and boaters. This fish is known to locals as Old Pops and has been observed wreaking havoc in the Sinkwood Lake. Perhaps we will be equating ourselves with Old Pops at some point. How do we see the pictures again? So you've got the the food chain of the fish, the ultramarine minnows, the thunder trout, and on top of the chain the dry mouthed sandfish. There you go, you see? It's good to learn these things. A patron just sat chilling out by the fire and reading. Very good indeed. Why not? And we are going to rest our weary head, excuse me. By trade, I am a cartographer, but unfortunately my productivity is down at the moment. I have run out of ink. It'll be a while before my shipment comes in. You're new around here, right? I'll bet you could use a map of Eastshade. 
Well, it's funny that you should say that, because I've been quite enjoying uh, walking around without one. But um, yeah, I suppose a map to refer to from time to time could be useful, potentially. If you'd like one, I have an extra print here I can give you. But in exchange, I'm wondering if there's something you can do for me. As I mentioned, I'm running low on ink. If you find me four inky cap mushrooms, I'll give it to you. Four inky caps. I shall keep an eye out. That would be grand. The last time I went inky cap foraging, I got trapped in a conversation with the park ranger. He's rather obsessed with trail making, isn't he? He gabbed about it for nearly an hour. Lucky me, he only gabbed about it for about two minutes. What do you think of Nava? A beautiful city. And very straightforward, cartographically speaking. Cartographically speaking? Or whatever that means. I shall shut your door, shall I? And keep the draft out. Okay. It's time for us to rest our weary heads after we have nicked candles and bits of fabric because we may need them. Right. I don't know what time is safe to go out. I'm going to get up at 5 and see if it's safe to go out at 5. Because we've been doing 6, but maybe 5 is safe. Time is of the essence here. Lots to explore, lots to see. We can't be sleeping our days away. I think another glass of port is going to be in order here. I finished my first glass nearly and I think, oh, you know what, I could quite have another one. Why not? You only live once, as they say. Why restrain yourself? Uh, right, 5.02. Let's just take a quick check on our journal just to see what we need to keep an eye out for as we just randomly wander our way through Eastshade, which is... I'm not stressing about any of these quests. If we happen to stumble across them, great. If we don't, hey, I'm not, I'm really not going to stress about it. We're going to enjoy what the game has to offer now, you know, just, just soak it in. So we'll keep an eye out for inky caps, that's fine. This wounded water fox is apparently in a cave but needs luring out with something. I'm still thinking maybe eggs. We're listening out for a rare bird. Not a clue. Abandoned tower, needs something warm to wrap up with or to drink before we can do that. The architect, we need more information. Uh, a prank of pastries, this is what we need to do. This is what we're going for, really, to Nava. Uh, is to prank that bear's pastry loving brother but not great pastries mind you he likes raspberry pastries i really like the guy's accent it's american it's some kind of an i'm sure it's some kind of american some area of america the accent that he's got i quite like it um so we're going to prank his brother with great pastries a heinous crime it's like somebody that was to it's like if somebody was to give me apricot pastries i any you can give me any pastry you want grape pastry love a bit of grape raspberry pastry blueberry pastry not keen on blueberries but i can eat them you know apple pastries apple tarts whatever i'll eat them all put your fruits in cherry pastries lovely jubbly give me an apricot pastry and i there shall be murder can't stand apricots Ugh, horrible and mandarins like oranges like satsumas like tangerines cannot stand mandarins Ugh. anyway so there you go you know what fruits i don't like and, and i don't like bananas either detest bananas of all the fruits that's probably the three that do it for me apricots bananas and mandarins any other fruit, fair game. Right, I'm going to go over to the Great Oak now and see what it's all about, up close and personal. And there was somebody stood near it before, so we'll just go see what there's to do there. Whilst keeping an eye out for a potential shot. If there's a potential shot of this thing, we should take it if we, are, if we have the inspiration to do so. Shoot, that was a black fizzle. <gasps> that was a black fizzle. Don't pick the black fizzles, man. It's illegal. 
You didn't see me do that, did you? No, you didn't see a thing. You didn't see a thing. Oh dear, don't do that again. The great, sh the great shade. Loving the stream. Nice. Look at this. Oh, so this is where the treehouse was as well. Mm, I'm thinking we need to we need to get it from the tr we need to get this tree from the treehouse angle. I'm thinking maybe we could maybe paint it from that uh, tower over that side, possibly. Good morning, 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 folks. Fantastic morning, isn't it? The sun is shining. It is a beautiful day. Strange, a tree that's got water coming out of it. It's got to say that is something that I've not seen much of before. I must admit. Oh, you dro you're dropping off, Nagisa. Ordinarily, I'd, I'd think to myself, you're just falling asleep on my watch. What the hell's going? But to, to be fair, this is the this is the purpose of a Sunday stream, as it should be. Relaxing. Feel free to nod off. And re just unwind. Your cares just wash away. Enjoy as best befits you. And if that's just... I'm terrible for doing that. When I'm watching um, LP videos... Um, last night, for instance, I was watching some LPs of um, 112 Operator. Because, as I say before, I always like to watch LPs of games that I'm playing. <laughs> Just because I always end up picking up some tips and stuff and things, and uh, yeah, about about half an hour in after I'd finished streaming yesterday, half an hour in, and I was feet up on my desk, sleeping. So the, there's no obvious way to get up into that uh, treehousey thing. Can you hear that bird? Is that the rare bird? It's an owl. I mean, an owl's not a rare bird, but it is hooting, so maybe... Look, look, look. Should we... Is an owl a rare bird in these parts? A rare bird. Expressed her interest in it with a distinct hoot. Owl's hoot. Owl's hoot. Yes, we need to paint it. We need to paint it. We've got a hooting owl, man. Oh, with a tower in the background? This would be a lovely painting. Right, quickly, quickly, please, quickly. We better have the inspiration. I'm going to uh, actually focus this as the star of the show. Small painting. Small painting with a tower in the background. Paint the owl. When it's facing forward. Face forward, Mr. Owl. Face forward, Mr. Owl. Let's get him in centre. Get him in the middle. Yes, we got him. We got him. I don't want to scare him. Mr. Owl. Oh, he's off. He's off. Look at that. Oh, bless him. Let's have a look at the painting. Oh, it looks a bit blurred from this angle, but if we go into the painting screen, it's probably better. Um, <laughs> it looks like an owl, kind of, doesn't it? Yeah, she'll love it. Right, Annika, she wants a painting of this rare bird. I, we're going to go backtrack a little bit and give it to her. Harry Potter's that? Oh, Hedwig. Oh, oh Hedwig. I was just thinking about Harry Potter the other day, maybe only about three or four days ago, and I was thinking to myself, um... I'm probably going to have to listen to the audiobooks again. I've read the books twice through. Um, I've listened to the audiobooks uh, once through. I'm thinking it's time to listen to the audiobooks again. Um, the audiobooks that I particularly enjoy, there's, there's the English versions which are done by Stephen Fry, which I'm, I mean, I'm not bad. But the audiobooks that I really enjoy are the, the American version, which, has been, which, was the, which have been done by Jim Dale. 
and uh, he was really good reading them. He did all the voices and everything. It was marvellous. Uh, these don't look like black thistles. So uh, they are the better audiobooks, if you ask me. And for those of you who have listened to the Jim Dale audiobooks, if you listen to the Harry Potter roleplay game trailer, the narrator for the trailer is Jim Dale. As soon as I heard the trailer, I was like, I know that voice. It's not, is it? And it was Jim Dale. The guy that read all of the uh, audiobooks for the American audience. Oh, I'm doing an LP of that game when it comes out. You bet your bottom dollar, my friend. You bet your bottom dollar. Love Harry Potter. Obviously, I read it, like, ages ago. I think I finished reading it before I started LPing, in fact, so... Obviously, I don't talk about it that much, but... I am a big, big fan. I've been to the, uh, the, the studios down in London. Actually, it's on the outskirts of Watford, to be fair. We still part of London, but... We went about four years ago, me and a friend. Took her for a birthday. To the uh, Warner Brothers... Warner, Warner Brothers studio. Was, was was a brilliant brilliant day. I got us um, I got a VIP pass, so we got um, a guided tour. I got a tour guide and um, some headsets to play all the uh, all the audio. It's really 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 good. We're back here again, have I? Which house am I going to choose? Now that isn't that a question and a half. Ooh, interesting choice. I'll have to see which way my mood takes me. It's going to be one of two, isn't it? I mean, it's like Gryffindor or Slytherin. The Ravenclaw and Hufflepuff. They never get looking, do they? Really, in any of the books. It's about the two. It's about the two houses, isn't it? Maybe we can create a character for Hufflepuff and bring them to bring them to fame. What? You painted that owl? C can I buy it from you? Well, actually, uh, seeing as you seeing as it's a bit smudged, yeah, of course you can. This is great. Ooh, ooh. There is a house test. I've never done a house test. Put it in the Discord, link it, and I, I, I could probably find it if I Google it to be fair, but if you do, main guy is Fantastic Beast is Hufflepuff. Oh, oh, oh I, 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 I can't remember that. Fantastic Beast is... I've seen them both in the cinema, but I've only seen them once. Annika, she wants the owl. That is not a bad picture, to be fair. I quite like that. The owl on a branch, the, 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 the tower in the back. That is not a bad picture. If it was a bit more clear, it would be perfect, but... Uh, there you go. Enjoy. Is this too many glowstones? No. I wouldn't know. I've never bought a painting before. That's perfectly fine. You've got a real ear for birds. Let me know if you ever need. Oh, potable. Okay, I'll, I can probably find Bye it. Bye now. I'll let I'll I'll, I'll I'll let you know in Discord later what what house I am. If I was to have a guess, I don't know to be fair. Oh, is it a ship? Oh, look, she's put it. She's got it in a. She's got it up already. She's put it up. Look at that, right above her bed. Oh, that is so cool, I like that. Actually, it looks really good on the wall. But I like that. Nice. Out of a duchy. Okay, well. Loyalty over... See, I'm a loyal person. I, I, I'm I, like, yeah, I'm very much loyal. And, and about loyalty when it comes to certain... Well, a lot of things. Somebody... If you screw me over, folks... Uh-oh. It sounds like we're getting walloped. Sounds like we're getting walloped. That's how like, oh, no, it's 4 2. Yeah, that's not bad. Right. 
I'm going to grab my... Gryffindor is brave, Slytherin is cunning, Ravenclaw is intelligent, Hufflepuff is lol. I'm probably going to be... Um, I'm probably going to be Hufflepuff or Ravenclaw, I would guess. I'll, 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 we'll see. I'm, place your bets now. Place your bets now, folks. <laughs> Knowing what you know of me, uh, what, where, do you, where do you think I'm going to... Where do you think I'm going to fall in the old uh, Harry Potter house uh, test? I'm just going to go grab myself another glass of port and I shall be back with you. Good evening, Cham. Good evening. I'm certainly not cunning. <laughs> brave. I mean, given my previous job, there's a degree of bravery involved. <clears throat> Run towards the scene of the crime and not away from it. I mean, that in itself is bravery, right? But Slytherin is definitely out. I'm certainly uh, cunning. I'm not. I, I don't. I don't have the cunningness. Uh, <coughs> good grief! I would be no good at any any sort of spy master role. I'd be useless. <clears throat> right. Let's get ourselves to Narva, and then we can start to focus on our explorations a bit further once we've got ourselves uh, over there. But there is lots to explore. All this wooded area, there, over there, oh, there's loads of places to visit. I can't wait to just be able to be let loose. But before I do that, I do want to get to Narva. And the bakery, really. I want to see what's in the, what's in the bakery. We've got, 30, we've got like 43 goals, the glowstones. We've got to be able to buy loads of baked goods. Is this the black thistle? I hope not. Yeah, they are. I'm picking like that's the third one I've picked. This is bad, man. If somebody sees me, we are in trouble. Once you've seen Elwyn push Belina out of the way, screaming, move, the bravery comes into question. <laughs> uh, hello, folks. Uh, it's called roleplay. Hello. <laughs> and Brentford lost today. Ah, oh, well. You can't keep winning forever. Wow, that looks pretty cool. Is this the cave where the... Uh, <clears throat> is this the cave where the little fox thing is? I think it is, you know. This could be the foxy cave. It is! It's the foxy cave! Uh, uh. It's a foxy cave, folks. It's a foxy cave, but we need to lure it out with something. I'm still thinking... Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. It's there. What do we have to do with it? A wounded water fox. The animal needs help, but he can't manage to lure it. It's going to run off if I come close, I think, but let's... Hello, fox. Hello. He needs eggs. This is the same fox as in the picture of the book. And the fox liked eggs. I think it's eggs it needs. Yep, it's going to run off without without me bringing eggs to it. It's definitely eggs. And there are chickens in the game because I've seen them. So I think we need to return here. 
with some eggs. Maybe put some eggs on here. Yeah, look, we can set the bait. We need eggs. Okay, I shall be back. It's eclipse time. Ooh, could be a good time to paint the tree during the eclipse. Yeah, that's true, isn't it? Going into a cave without fear of being ambushed, attacked, assaulted, eaten alive. What am I doing later? Um, I'm having a, a grand feast. Uh, my mother is uh, preparing a buffet. We're having a bit of a buffet dinner from Marks and Spencer. She's been to Marks and Spencer's this afternoon to get all the goodies. So uh, we're having that about nine o'clock. Is that somebody sat? We can zoom in, you know. There you go. It is like a overlook, isn't it? Here it is. And this has like a really large waterfall. And look at that bridge. Oh wow, look at that. There's a water wheel, another tower. That must be Narva. lovely place to read oh what a fantastic place to read look at this now this is a picnic spot and a half you've got the right idea my friends you have got the perfect idea I did say we're going to get to Narva today, so we will we will get there eventually. We will promise you. I promise you, we'll get to Narva. Oh, hang on, is that another mushroom? Is that another inky cap? Could be. Yep, we have two inky caps. Two more required. Oh, we've got another one. That's three inky gaps. One more inky cap and we get ourselves a map. Not that I'm specifically looking for inky caps, mind you. We just will stumble across them naturally. I'm not going to go hunting them down like some kind of maniac. I'm also picking the... Uh, I'm also committing illegal acts of picking the... Uh, Okay, we've got enough now. Uh, pick, picking the um, the black thistles. Right, okay. So our quest to get to Narva has just taken a slight setback as we now backtrack to the rest stop on the, uh, on the rock is my official title for this place. Yes, it has been a bit quiet. It's okay. We've been getting little little snippets of music. 
subtle. So subtle you've not noticed it, but I've noticed it. Uh, okay, I missed a little, most of these comments. Um, yes, it did look it did look like they were having a Valentine's uh, bit of a rendezvous, and that would wouldn't that be a lovely Valentine's uh, <coughs> liaising? Looking at something like that whilst having a picnic, sun shining, fantastic. Spiced wine, no. But we are going to be in Narva soon, so who knows? There is a possibility. That's my room, or was my room last night. Have you by any chance found those inky caps yet? Well, I might have done. Great. I've just put the final touches on your map. I hope it serves you well. Safe travels. And we now have a map. Okay, so... We can now see exactly the crack. <laughs> Turn the phrase. Exactly what the crack is, right? So we know. Can we zoom into this thing? So okay. So we started off down here. We've gone to the port of Lindo, the town. We've gone up here to Annika's house and the owner's house. We've got the Kestrel's Eyrie there, which we visited. So I'm thinking it only pin. It only highlights these once you've visited them. I'm thinking. Um, so we've gone there. We've got the Selt Spring Coast down there. We've got the Great Shade near the tree. The Tiffmore Bluffs is where we need to take a picture. Ocean's Last Breath to the north. So it looks like it gets pretty nippy to the north. We've got a frosty region with lots of snow and mountains and what look like sort of mini icebergy type things. That could be quite cool to see that. The Restless Reach mountainous area. Uh, Narva is as far east as we're gonna get uh, once we get there. We've also got the Blushwood Forest, which is kind of a pink colour, and this rather large lake. I'm pointing, you can't see what I'm pointing at uh, on the map. I'm pointing with my finger at the screen. Uh, there's a, a nice lake area there as well. The Westerly Woodlands. We've not been there either. So, okay. So it's nice to be able to put some perspective on things, just to know roughly where we are. We're not going to use the map that often. I quite like the fact in this game so far we've just been wandering. We've not been kind of beholden to quest markers, to maps. Where are we going? Where are we going? We're just exploring. Which actually forces you to use your kind of navigation and use what kind of natural waypoints to, to find your way. And it's, it's good. Cave near the bluffs. What cave near the bluffs? There's a cave at the top. Yeah, is that a cave? Could be. The path kind of forks to the left and to the right and to the right. There's like a brown thing. Is that a cave? Could be. So what are we required to paint? Again, let's remind ourselves. <clears throat> so we've painted the tree <clears throat> anywhere on the Tiffmore Bluffs. So the Tiffmore Bluffs is huge. So anywhere there we'll find a great shot. The highest peak and a view from the top of the common tower in the big city. So if we look to the map one more time before we move on. The tower in the big city is probably Narva. Tiffmore Bluffs is huge, anywhere there. And the highest peak, that must be somewhere in the Restless Reach, surely. So we know roughly where the paintings are that we need to get. But we're not in any rush to get them, so... Okay, that's good. It's good to have a map of some description, to be fair. But... Uh, that is as much as we're checking it for the time being, because uh, we don't need it. We do not need it at all. Right. Now, folks, I am going to go to Narva. <laughs> no distractions. No diversions. Alright. I'm getting there. Trust me. Alright. Good morning, Mr. Bear. Good morning. No, oh, it's afternoon now. I've had too many glasses of port, it seems. I don't know what's going on.
I wonder if there's a if there's a way, console command or otherwise, to slow down the time. Any game of exploration, any game that's got views that are worth drinking in, I always find that the time passes too quickly. It is completely and utterly not combat related. There is no combat in this game whatsoever. <gasps> Eggs! For the silver... Fishy fox. Sil what's it called? Fox? Water fox. Okay. I may not be getting to Narva today, people. I may change that statement <laughs> about no distractions. I just found a legitimate distraction. And now I'm getting distracted by collectible stuff. Roots and <laughs> roots and plants and Paul Vinius is like Elwin reincarnated. All he needs is a couple of goblets of spiced wine in hand, and we're there. We are there. I mean, Elwin wasn't much of a pain to like, but uh, you know. Anyway, we're off to back. We're off back to the cave where the fox was. He's he's wounded. He needs our help, or she. And there you go. Nagisa? Music. Could you, could you picture Elwin as a painter? Hmm. Right, where's Mr. Fox? I mean, you no harm, Foxy. I wonder if we have to paint it, you know, because why else would we be helping it if not to paint it, maybe? I don't know. We'll see. Let's put the eggs down. Set the bait. Okay, so you, we set the bait, but it doesn't actually... Look, 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 he's coming, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming, look! Oh, look! Oh! We've got him, we've got him! Oh, no, 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 we're not doing it to harm you, we're here to help you! It's okay, it's okay! I managed to trap him! Oh! I heard the shrinks all the way above ground! I need to administer the cell! Help him quickly, his poor creature. He's in distress. There he is. Well, I guess I should thank you. I'm afraid to give up on this damned water fox. Listen, it's pretty clear that you're a nature lover. I don't know how you managed to catch that animal, but I do appreciate it. Let me show you how to make a snug tent. Should be useful for someone like you, roaming the country and all. It will give you a place to relax if you need to kill time, and shelter if you find night sneaking up on you. Yes! I can make a tent! How do we make a tent? Can't believe how excited I am about making a tent. <laughs> okay, I need sticks, fabric, and twine. Oh, that's easy! I can get that now! Right, let's make some more twine. How many more twines do we need? Three more. Right, we've got five twine, six sticks. We need uh, two more fabrics. And then we have enough to make a tent. So if we... So if we make a tent once, is that it? Done? Or do you have to make a tent every time? Is the question. That is the question. We shall cross that bridge when we come to it, but we need to find some more fabric first. The, we can probably buy fabric in the city. Right, now we're going to Narva. 5.25. We've got two hours. Can we get there without any further distractions? We're going to try. We helped Mr. Fox. 
the highlight of my day and taking the picture of the owl that was quite cool I enjoyed that as well that was quite good and finding the uh, picnic spot as well that was pretty pretty nice the highlights of my day do not pick pluck or pull what what do you mean what do you mean what are you talking about Do you know what this reminds me of? Seeing the waterfalls here, it reminds me of Norway. Uh, Norway, there are a crap ton of waterfalls. An absolute crap ton. Oh! <laughs> I didn't see you there. Why? Quite a dense forest. Need a lift? Oh, he's a carriage driver, so he takes us to Lindau, and the other last takes us back this way. No, I don't do fast travel. All right, then. Mm -hmm. Everywhere I go, I will go on foot, for this is a game that deserves to be uh, savoured. Ah, yes, a new colour. May I see your reference letters, please? Uh, reference letters? I'm afraid if you're seeking passage into Narva, you'll need three reference letters from citizens of Eastshade, signed and sealed. Oh, uh, why? It hasn't always been this way, but lately we've been getting more newcomers than usual. We don't want to be unwelcoming to new folk, but we are trying to have some measure of security. Will that be all, then? And how do I get references? Well, you need to find people who are willing to vouch for your character and writing. Since you're a newcomer, you'll have to make some friends in the country. Will that be all, then? Okay, I'm thinking I've helped enough people to get references. So we're going to go back to everybody that we've painted for and helped, and we're going to get references. Will that be all, then? I suppose it will be. Stay safe now. I shall be back with your references soon enough. Oh, look, we've got some of the icy area just coming into view here. Look at that. Oh, and look at that as well. The fields. Oh, fantastic. Oh, the hell is that orange thing? Is that a hot air balloon or something? It is a hot air balloon, isn't it? Possibly. Anyway, it's getting close to being freezing cold time. And we don't have enough, we can't make a tent just yet, so we shall have to move on back to uh, the Eyrie uh, and take it from there. Maybe she'll, maybe the, either the cartographer might give us a reference? Yes, I mean I've only been to Norway once on a cruise, it was a Norwegian, obviously Norwegian Fjords cruise, and we started off at the south and went north, as I've already told you many times I'm sure, but uh, you know, I am somebody that really likes... I live in England, for God's sake. When I go on holiday, I like to go on holiday for some warmth. We get enough cold here, thank you very much. Um, but, apart from the weather, which of course was cold, and, you know, North Cape, near the North Pole, very cold in fact, um, I've taken a wrong turn here, folks. <laughs> Bit too busy nattering here. This is definitely a new area. This is Ra Rania's house. I I don't want to do this yet. Oh, what's this? Like pan pipes, giant pipes. It's like a musical instrument. What is this? Just give me inspiration, whatever it is. I don't have to get out of this at the moment. I'm still stuck. Ins 
inspirational. Inspirational, indeed. Paul Vinicius is not a musician, apparently. Uh, <laughs> right, we need to get. This is quite serious now. It's seven ten. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna freeze. We are. It was about twenty past seven. Yeah, it's happening. Paul Vinius is freezing to death. Where's it gonna put us? I wonder. I hope it's not game over. We've done quite a lot, and I've not saved it for a while. Oh, don't die, please. <laughs> oh no. I know, I know. It was the music. Where's it putting us? It's gonna put us in the eerie thing, I'm sure. It's the last place we we. Yes. Yes, it's put us here. We're alive, folks. We're not dead. It's okay. It's okay. We're not dead. A nice citizen rescued us. Yeah, big citizen with fluffy, you know, fluffy stuff. Like, oh, another visitor. They don't come with the required clothing, you know. Right, 5 a.m. is good. So yeah, as I was saying, yes, Norway. So when I go on holiday, I like to go somewhere warm because it's like nice to get to somewhere nice and warm, to, which is something that's distinctly lacking in the UK for any great length of time. We do get warm weather once a flood. Uh, but um, yeah, so going on a Norwegian fjord cruise, we obviously weren't blessed with warm weather. So that to me, it was like, it's not really a holiday for me if I'm not somewhere warm. But I got to say, the scenery in Norway was unbelievable so unbelievable and we went on a cruise um, to Geiranga the Geiranga Ford I think it was called and um, it was one of the one of the few places in the that we stopped off at that we actually booked a trip and uh, the the bus ride to get to the glacier where we were going was um, Unbelievable. I'm telling you now, I'm not kidding you. We stopped off for lunch as well, overlooking some really great scenic overlook. The lunch was fantastic. The view was awesome. And um, But the, the trip... The, there's, two, there's two trips, or two places that I visited that stand out to this day, where you see what you're seeing, and it takes your breath away. You're like, literally, you, you, it's, it's difficult to explain, but I get a, like a feeling inside of just just great awe and amazement you know you, you just drink it in and it's like you just can't believe what you're seeing and i've had it twice Th that's happened to me and that was one of them when i was on that trip um it was just unbelievable not not the actual trip up to the top of the flip where the glacier was the winding road where the bus was going up this snaky road, you know, and it got to the end and it does a turn and you're overlooking like a 400 foot drop. I didn't enjoy that so much, but yeah, just just the whole surrounding scenery on the on the bus ride from that entire day where we, we stopped off at one of the, I can't remember the name of the, of the, the, of the lake, but it was the, I don't know if it's the largest or the deepest lake in Europe. Really, oh, it's fantastic. So that was the first place. And the second place where I actually got that same kind of feeling of uh, just utter awe and amazement was um, um, Herculaneum in, uh, in Naples, which is a Roman town that was preserved after the eruption of Mount Vesuvius. And it's very well preserved. Pompeii gets all the fame. Pompeii is the famous one. It was a larger town. It's all it's Pompeii, Pompeii. But if you're looking for uh, seeing uh, a much better preserved town and much better preserved artifacts, Herculaneum is the place to go because it was it was covered in mud um, rather than ash. So um, the things there are much better preserved, and some of the frescoes and the tiles of floors and stuff are immaculately preserved. It's just unbelievable. It was I, that day. I could have spent five, six, seven hours looking around that place. We only had three hours, and I it wasn't enough time. It was just fantastic. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm talking, and I'm not. I'm not concentrating. I'm supposed to be getting um, recommendations or something, aren't I? What do you call them? People are supposed to sign reser reservations. I, what did she say? 
References. I need references. Sorry. I'm, I'm lost in thought here, talking about it. It's probably because I've not been on holiday for a while. <laughs> I'm reminiscing. And I am feeling warmer today. I've got two pairs of pants on and I've got two pairs of socks on. And I'm drinking alcohol, which always warms you up, so... Anyway, um, do we have any ideas of who might give us a reference? I think the park ranger will give us a reference. I think the park ranger will give us a reference. I think the lady where we've given an owl painting will probably give us a reference. And I'm thinking um, one other person. Somebody in, the, in Lindo should give us one, surely. Nika? The guy with the pot on his head? He must be able to get references from these mm -hmm. guys. Sure, I can vouch for you. Yay! You really got me out of a pinch there with that water fox. I've got one letter reference. Thank you. Okay, I think maybe the cartographer? We got our inky caps after all. Maybe? Let's have a look. I th we're scraping the barrel with this one, but we're going to try it, okay? We're going to try it. The guy that likes slug cakes. He doesn't know what a reference is. Bless him. Not you. I didn't do anything for you. Let's try the cartographer. Thanks again for the inky caps. I can finally get some work done now. That's a thing. I don't know. It's a surprise buffet. I'm really. It really is a surprise. For a friend like you, of course. Enjoy the city. All I know, though, is I'm rather hungry. Uh, I've got another hour to go. See you. And I'm going to devour whatever is there, including any dessert, because hey ho, it's the last day of my, it's the last day of my week off my diet. I've had a bad week. It's gone to the dogs. I've had pancakes. I've had alcohol. I've had all kinds of stuff. I've had biscuits, lots of custard creams. Uh, so tomorrow, back on the regime. So I might as well finish it off today in style with eating like a pig why not enjoy the full mashings i'm looking forward to my week at work this week i don't want to curse myself but i should touch wood have a slightly quieter week this week half my staff are off on holiday or sick um Sick is obviously not so good for them, but uh, the holidays are fine. So I've got uh, I've got a reduced staff to, uh, this week. I've got I've got I've only got I think I've only got six members of staff in compared to the usual eleven. So I'm looking forward to hopefully a quieter week this week. Why can't I loot this? Oh, I can. Excellent. So hopefully I'll have a chance to draw breath. Maybe I can just put some music on YouTube whilst I'm working for a change and just enjoy just having the time to just do what I need to do rather than stressing out with things that crop up last minute, you know? <laughs> you never say that at the start of the week. I've cursed myself. I know. I am the worst person with commentator's curse. So when I come to you next weekend on Friday with some... Uh, one would to operator. I you expect me to say I've had the wig from hell. I mean, how bad can it be with only six staff in? I shouldn't. Why am I? Why am I? Why am I doing this to myself? I should shut up. <laughs> I should shut up. Uh, I should be quiet. Ooh, ooh, thanks for the painting. I want a reference. Ooh, for a friend like you, of course. Ooh, thank you. Ooh, ooh, thanks for the painting. What the hell are you doing? Why are you doing that? Bye now. Right, I've got enough recommendations, references. And it's only early, so we've got plenty of time. Right, let's, let's, let's enjoy the walk back to Nava whilst we chew the fat and have some conversation here. No inkling. I know I've got... I, I think there's some sausage rolls. I've seen some sausage rolls in... in uh, downstairs in the kitchen but that literally is it <laughs> I don't know anything else it's all a surprise although um, I've been I don't think there's any cake Marks and Spencer she went to Marks and Spencer's my mother um, and Marks and Spencer's do a rather divine lemon drizzle cake 
It's my favourite, one of my favourite cakes is the Marks and Spencer's Lemon Drizzle Cake. I'm kind of secretly hoping that there's going to be some of that available. Although, my mother thinks I'm on a diet, so she probably might not, she probably won't buy any cakes, but you never know. You never know. I'm holding out hope. <laughs> I'm holding out hope. I'm a drizzle, please. Please, I'll have half of it today. It's fine. I'm on diet's off today. I'll have half the cake with a cup of tea afterwards. Yeah, you can't have a buffet with no cake, can you? You can't. So there's got to be some kind of cake there, surely. Surely to heavens. Right, we are not going to go into Narva at the moment because what we're going to do is we're going to go back to where we ended up um, at the, uh, yesterday evening before we ended up passing out due to hypothermia, which was, there was a cabin over there and there's also a cabin here as well with a map on the wall. We don't need our own map. We can actually just look at this. And this tells you where all the inns are as well. Look at that. There is an inn in the middle of the lake. Oh, shortbread. Oh, stop it, please. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. There is an inn in the middle of the lake. And if we get one of those rafts that we can make, we can probably sail out to it. Oh, we've got to get into that. We've got to get to that inn. We've got to get to that inn. That would be awesome. Right, I'm nicking things. I'm sorry, there's two books here. I don't know whose place this is. Ooh, we can build a fire. Building a campfire. A campfire is a handy tool for those wishing to brave the cold nights of East Shade. Build one to cozy up to your uh, up your campsite, and brew a nice cup of tea. So you can cook at it and it warms you up as well. In this issue of Adventure Lifestyle magazine, we will teach you how to light a fire of your own. Simply follow the schematic included here to light a roaring fire. Sure to keep your evenings comfortable. Strap on your boots, adventurers, because the first step is collecting. Fellow adventurer, Listel shares a tale of his first time building a fire. Well, I'll never go back to sitting in the cold dark again. I ended up smelling like smoke, which wasn't my favourite thing, but you can't have a good camping experience without a toasty fire. So we can craft a tent, and we can now craft a fire. At some point in this game, if only it is once we do it, we have to build a tent and a fire, and we've got to camp outside in the wilderness at least once to experience it. We've got to do it. Can't beat a bit of camping in a game. Camping in real life? No. I went camping once, I would never go again. I had a bad experience. Dear Victor, how I have missed you. Only three months into my journey and a large part of me wonders if it was an utter folly. I can't help but think of all the work you're doing in the shade without my help. Your dedication to the park is what inspired me to set out in search of my dearest passion. But what I found is that the world feels smaller without you by my side. For all the endless islands and new cities, I still find myself wishing to spend an evening by the fire with you. And so I have decided to return early. I had planned to surprise you, but couldn't wait. The world is beautiful, but even still, the vision of you is the one I ch Well, good grief. With love, Nils. I look forward to hearing about the birth of the Water Fox Kits. So, Victor, Victor, I didn't catch his name, the, um, the ranger guy. But this must be the ranger guy, right? And he was talking about somebody that went off, which must be Nils. But it sounds like she's come back. Maybe? Strange. Mm, okay. We're getting, a of, we're getting quite a bit of romance, aren't we? Valentine's Day, we've had the picnic overlook spot. That was quite a Valentine kind of theme, wasn't it? And then we're getting this love letter here, gushing about how the world is not the same without him there. 
Now where? Oh, it's over there. Look. I was gonna say where was that? Uh, where was that cabin that we saw? I think it was over here. <laughs> uh, are we gonna get to Narva today? Yeah, I think so. Oh, look at this. Oh, I'm liking the look of this. Lots of pink here, which by my map's reckoning would be the edge of the Blackwood Forest. Oh, no, sorry, <laughs> I can't read. The Blushwood Forest. There's Rania's house, which is where I'm trying to get to. Okay. Any update on the new PC? Um, I'm looking forward to getting my new PC now. Because when I get my new PC, I'm going to have a bit of a clear out here. Because my the wires here are horrendous. There's just wires galore. I'm going to get my new PC and get it all wired properly. I'm going to get some tape cable ties and get the wiring done much better than this. It's horrendous. It's absolutely hor It's an eyesore. Um, I got an email from uh, Scan last Friday. And I saw it was from Scan. And I thought, oh my god. Oh, I opened it in such a hurry. Thinking, oh my god, it's going to be an update. And it wasn't an update. It just said, uh, thank you for your order. Um, I can't remember exactly what it said. But it basically said um, that, uh, you know, we'll let you know when your parts come in stock. <laughs> I was like, no, God. But the order that I, when I purchased the order, it said 12th of March was the estimated time. And we're not near the 12th of March yet. Are we? We've got another month to go. So it, it is what it is. But by the time I finished this, and finished Operator, and finished the other game that I'm playing, Monkeys. Oh, look at this. is awesome. I like this view. Don't fear the monkeys. I've got a feeling that I'll probably finish all of these within about two weeks. Two or three weeks tops, which actually, to be fair, will be not too far from the 12th. But yeah, when I get that up and running, I am looking forward to um, playing some full, proper games again. As in, like, proper, long games main games. These are all kind of side games at the moment. Um, but yeah, 12th of March apparently. If it is anywhere near the 12th of March, I'll be happy. Um, the only issues I've had with scan computers is their pace. So I remember I ordered one for my birthday. The last one I ordered in 2000 and 13 or something? 2013. I was playing Knights of the Old Republic at the time. I remember playing it and I was supposed to be getting a new computer for my birthday and uh, it came in June. <laughs> my birthday's in May. So the only issues I've had are really with the timing of the, the orders. Although I have had some overheating issues as well, to be fair. One of them had an over... I had a water cooler in one of them and it... Something was wrong with it. That was around about the time of Metal Gear Solid, so that was 2015. What are these little dolls? Shady and Folk Tales, Volume 2. An owl folk and a bear folk went to the shore. Sounds like a joke. <laughs> in a contest to see who could catch more fish, the bear roared and the fish cowered in fear so the bear could catch them. The owl flapped her wings and came to, uh, at the fish from above, so they did not flee as she swooped in to catch them. So they raced until midnight, when every fish in the ocean had been caught. The bear, certain that he had caught the most fish, was very tired, and quickly curled into his bed for a long rest. The owl flew into her nest for a nap, quite confident that she had won the contest. Now, the fish were still swimming in the back, uh, basket traps, and they did not want to be eaten. They pushed and shoved, heaving the baskets down a hill and landing with a splash into the ocean. But when the baskets burst open, the water they breathed wasn't salty at all. The fish had fallen into a lake instead, and they very much enjoyed the absence of huge sea waves. And so the fish grew very comfortable in the Sinkwood Lake and Feldstream River, and they still live there to this day. As for the owl folk and bear folk, they each woke after a long slumber and forgot about the contest entirely. I like um, tales, uh, 
like stories, folk stories and stuff. It reminds me of my time as a teacher way back when I was like 20 years old. Story time and reading to the kids. Um, you got a CPU. Oh, so your script worked. That's cool. So the CP I, when I rung to get my when I rung to place my order, I was on the phone for about half an hour with a guy. <laughs> I did try a bit of um, negotiation. I didn't get anything off. I didn't get anything knocked off the um, off the price of the components, but I got I got free delivery, which saved me fifteen quid. Like, oh, is that all you can do for me? I'm a long term customer. It's twelve twenty five. I'm a long term customer. This is like my fourth machine I had from you guys. Come on, just give me something else off. Come on. Oh yeah, and I'm getting Call of Duty free as well. The latest Call of Duty. I was like, well, I don't want it. <laughs> He's like, well, I'll just throw it in for you. I don't want it. <laughs> I don't play Call of Duty anymore. I'm too old for that rubbish. Uh, so yeah, I'm getting Call of Duty, and I'm get, I am I got a uh, free delivery uh, thrown in. So, But yeah, we were on the phone for half an hour. We haven't got old chinwag with a guy. And uh, yeah, oh, 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 what I was tr getting at was the fact that the, the CPU wasn't the pro wasn't the problem. The uh, the fifty nine hundred X wasn't the issue. Uh, it, the, the graphics card is very much the issue. <laughs> Not to mention the backlog, because even if you wanted a uh, even if you wanted a PC that wasn't going to be containing any of those hard to get parts, you would still be in a massive queue because of the fact that the COVID situation there's not anywhere near as many staff working to build the machine. So, there's a problem with that, a problem with the supply, combine the two, you've got a massive problem. Are we playing drafts? Checkers to you American folks? We call it drafts here in the UK, okay? Drafts. Anyway, who are you? Why, hello, friend. Glorious day, wouldn't you say? What an incredible day to be alive. Um, you know what? I think you're right. Ah, I see you're a traveller, swept in from some distant land. How enchanting. Ah, oh, marvellous place, Eastshade. The only trouble is, traveller, the little mice. Mice? The what? The little mice. You see, they've taken a liking to my garden. Not sure how they eat so much when I'm not looking. Must be bigger than I think. I'm standing guard, but it's not working. Somehow they're getting past me. Must be while I'm sleeping. Not that I mind, really. I'm glad they have a proper meal. But how I dream of cooking up a proper stew. Vegetable, of course. Can't have a good stew without an assortment of the finest crops, eh? Oh, I agree. I had a lovely chicken stew last night. As you will know if you were watching. Uh, delicious! Tell you what. Bring me seven sticks so I can finish my fence. That just may do the trick against these crafty carrot eaters. Of course, I never let a friend journey on without a few glowstones to pad their pocket. How's ten sound? Uh, I've already got seven for you. Oh, isn't that perfect? I knew it was a good thing we met, Traveller. Of course, I appreciate your help. Nothing wrong with running around picking up sticks. Just don't forget to get lost once in a while, eh? And look around you. Smell the roses. I know. I like taking my time. And I am taking my time. I'm talking with my friends here. I'm drinking port. I'm observing the scenery. It's fantastic. Oh, listen to me. I sound like an old-timer. Not at all. What a fine one you are. Polite as they come. You'll fit in splendidly in our little community here in East Shade. Folk are as kind as can be. Anyhow, thanks for getting these sticks for me. It's a full-time job, standing guard. Why don't you come back in a day's time? That'll give me time to patch up this fence and see how it does against the little mice. See you soon. Okay, so we need to come back to Finn to see how his fence gets on. I will do that, Finn. But for now, we need to get back to uh, Narva. I say back, we've never been. Because we keep getting bloody distracted. Right, folks, it's the final reckoning. We are on the final countdown. We are going to make it to Narva. We've got 50 minutes. Come on. No more distractions. Uh, 
Did I enjoy teaching? I did. I did. I did enjoy teaching. The issue was, <laughs> I couldn't see myself doing it for, for a, a long period of time. Um, it was a very stressful job. And anybody that is a teacher, I have the utmost respect for them because uh, it was hellacious. It, I wanted, I always, I, I, want, I, I still stand by this methodology today that I always want a job that when you are at home, you are at home. I do not wish to take my home, my work home with me. So when I log off or come home for the day, that's me done. Teaching, you can't do that. You, you can't do that. You, you've got to take your work home with you. You've got to do so many different things. And to me, that's, not, that's, that's a big no-go. I cannot be doing work at home outside of work hours. I taught 7 to... Oh, well, it was set, my, my specialism was 7 to 11. My specialist subject was mathematics. I taught in two schools during my placements. Um, and for the most part, I enjoyed it, yeah. But as I said, it was just like I couldn't... I just couldn't. Um, and plus, I wanted to be in the police, which was my first choice uh, of a job. And then as I qualified uh, as a teacher, the opportunity came around for the, to join the police or to apply. And I got in, so it was like, well, it's a no-brainer, really. Do you have your references in order? I do! Actually. Hmm, yes, it appears everything is in order. Go right ahead, then. And welcome to Narva. Welcome to Narva. I thank you kindly. And so I walk across this rather dangerous bridge. To say how high this bridge is, I'm kind of unnerved by the lack of a guardrail. I really am. I mean, look at this. Look, if you were to stumble drunk, <laughs> you'd be dead. I'm telling you. But there we go. We are at Narva. Now, this is the only tower, really, in Narva. So I'm kind of thinking, do we have to paint a view from the tower or of the tower? A view from atop of the common tower. So I think we're going to go up here and paint a view. And I'm probably going to paint a view of the mountains, to be fair, with the sun, the moon. That would be quite the view from up there. That's my. That's going to be the view that we take, I think, if that is what we are required to paint. But look at this. Look at the waterfalls. We've got the water running down. We've got the statues. Ah, this is this is fantastic. The hot air balloon, which we're going to have to visit at some point, of course. And we are in. Nava. Inspiration galore. Look at this. The tarnished teapot. And I love the music as well. <laughs> it is very much true. Yes, it was far much more fun chasing people. Yes, with a club. <sighs> right, we're going to kind of go in a clockwise manner, just to keep a bit of order to this exploration of the town. The city. Hey, is that a bakery? Is that a bakery? Oh, Leilani. <sighs> uh, Leilani? She's... well, she works in the spice shop down in the lower market. Spice? She's not the best cook, though. <laughs> but she's wonderful. I mean, you know, she's a great person. So kind, funny, thoughtful. We've been spending a lot of time together lately. Things are really so great between us. I think I want to ask her if she'll be my girlfriend. 
This is where we turn into somewhere special when I ask her though. Somewhere magical and perfect. I've got an idea. Like sitting on a golden cloud at sunset while butterflies circle around us. But you're probably not interested in this kind of thing. The Lally Luli Lo. <laughs> the Lally Luli Lo. This is where we turn into now a Cupid again. What is it with games and turning us into Cupids, man? This is the Valentine's Day edition, you know. This is, this is scripted. <laughs> tell me, tell me more. I love all that soppy stuff. She loves bread. So yesterday I baked her a loaf in the shape of a rose. Oh. We ate it together on a bench in the garden. It was so perfect. Oh my God. What if I already missed the perfect moment? I'm just so nervous to ask the question. Can you, would you do me a favor? Can you find out Leilani's favorite place? I know it's kind of silly to dance around like this. I just want it to be special. Uh, no, no, love is disgusting. Love is disgusting. <laughs> I'm sure I can do that for you, Evelina. As long as you give me lots of fresh baked bread for free. Because I'm a sucker for fresh bread, bit of butter, mmm, bit of ham and cheese. Oh, yes. Beautiful. You're the best. She works in the spice shop down in the lower market area. Let me know what you find out. Please hurry. I'm so excited. So am I. Oh. You gotta love fresh baked bread, surely. Fresh baked bread is just so delightful. Oh. Right. Okay. Look at that. We got different different rolls, crusty rolls. We got baguettes. We got uh, little bun. Oh, look at that. We got bread buns. Oh, delightful. Oh, fresh baked bread with a bit of lurpat butter. Oh, delightful. D flipping lightful. What the hell is this guy doing? <laughs> what the hell is he doing? Oh dear. Oh no. I've done something terrible. I'm not sure if we've met before. But, but I need help. Okay, okay. Calm down, calm down. Just tell me what's happened. Oh dear. This morning I sold some zucchinis. I thought they were zucchinis, but now I still have the zucchinis here in my basket. I sold toxic tubers. Oh God, I've no idea who I sold them to. Oh God, oh God, God. What are the symptoms of toxic tuber poisoning? Numb legs, upset stomach, and then oh, hours of vomiting. Hmm, okay, 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 okay. Calm down, stop panicking, it will be fine. How? How will this ever be okay? I'm ruined! Once was bad enough, but twice. Uh, what, 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 you've done this before? And now people are gonna start being sick. There's so little time. I need to recover those tubers. Can you help me? I've got no one else to turn to. Okay, 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 what can I do? Thank you, thank you. Please, just ask people if they bought any zucchinis today. Tell them what happened and get the tubers back. I sold four zucchinis all together and I put them in blue bags. Maybe that could help you find them. Oh God, I hope no one has eaten any. This is quite the calamity, folks. This guy has sold poisonous food to members of the public. This is... This is code red. This is code red alert. We need to crack on and find. Oh, the cheese shop. Oh, the cheese shop. The cheese with the bread. This, these little pots are probably butter. Oh my god. This is too much. This is too much for me, man. I'm salivating here. Right. Okay. So let's just check our journal. We have marketplace romance. 
We need to go to the spice shop and find out what her favourite place is. And we need to talk to a variety of different people to find out whether they've bought zucchinis or not. Yeah, exactly. Not straight. Ooh! Where's that going? It's going underground. Is that like to the cells? The prison? I don't know, but I'm going to find out because I'm uh, in exploration mode. Let's go have a look, shall we? This looks ominous. Unless it's going to a... I don't know. Where is it going? Maybe a scenic overlook, perhaps. Oh, the walls. The city walls. Look at this. Not bad. Now that's quite a nice, uh, that's, not, that's, not, that's a nice shot. Look at that. The moon to the left, the sun in the center, the mountains, just a bit of the foreground there, a little bit of the wall at the bottom. That's quite a nice, that's quite a nice scene. Okay, what's what's the is it F12? What's the number for what's? Got it. Screenshot. Got it. Could be my next wallpaper for now. I, I, the last wallpaper, the, my, my current wallpaper that I've got at the moment is still the one that I took from the um, the end of Metro Exodus. <laughs> it's about time I changed it. I'm not going to go across the full length of the walls here, but. The Heart Route, 7 o'clock tonight at the Tarnished Teapot. Join us to hear the riveting tale of the Heart Route. Okay. Tarnished Teapot, 7pm sharp. We are going to see what that's all about. Could be some kind of performance. I did say I'm not going to come down here, but I couldn't resist. Quite an oriental vibe, this music. Greetings. I'm just going for a nice walk around the perimeter. Don't mind me. I can't help myself. I am getting distracted. Poor Vinius has the attention span of a gnat. Here, get your news here. What's the password? Oh, a bouncer? I don't know. And get lost. What the hell is this? Some sort of secret society. Strange. Okay, we shall have to uh, remember this when we come back. If you ever get a password. Right, we better find the inn. Just because if we don't, I wonder if the game will punt us all the way back to the other inn that we were in. <laughs> or if the game punts you into the nearest inn, maybe, I'm not sure. But uh, we better just make sure that we check in in the inn here, just in case. Looks like we've got some kind of a teacher here.
a wonderful show at the Tarnished Teapot last night. The Tea House hosts a different musician or storyteller every evening. Oh, they are such inspiring events. Goodness, I almost fed this to my grandmother. Thanks for finding me. Here, you take it back. I don't need it anymore. Yes, you already asked. Uh, I nearly gave it to my... Okay, so we've actually found one of the toxic tuba purchases, which is fortunate. Fortunate indeed. Right. Tarnished teapot, there it is. Okay, I'm going to quick save it here for a second because I want to just test. If we build a tent. Oh, you have to put it down. You have to put it down there and then. I thought maybe if you build it, it'll be in your inventory. But no, you've got to put it down. And I think it might well be one use only. Hello there. Such a great day, isn't it? Absolutely. Ah, I just love days like this. Last night, I saw two shooting stars, and right then, I knew today was going to be a fine one. Ah, you're an artist? Oh, you must be very skilled. I can barely draw a straight line in the mud. <laughs> if you're feeling especially energetic, we could always use a hand in the fields. We've got a lot of work down on the pea terraces. It can be draining, but I like to read in my free time. A nice book of poetry always boosts my spirits. What's he hinting at? What? Are you serious? Okay, well, I bought some, but I definitely didn't eat them. I'd never make that kind of mistake. I, uh, I just don't have them anymore. Threw them away. <laughs> I, mm, I need to go now. Oh dear, perhaps he's not telling the truth. <laughs> okay, so we've got two of the, two of the four tuba, tuba patrons. Got a little bit of time left. Well, looky doda, we've got a fresh face. I haven't seen you in the city before, and I like to think I know just about everyone around here. The One Glowstone Allow Guy. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Osha. Some people around here call me the One Glowstone Guy because I'll buy anything for one glowstone. Any item under the sun and moon. Just one glowstone? Just one. The way I see it, I already got just about everything I need in life. So nothing's worth more than one glowstone to me. There's only one thing that's worth more than a glowstone to me. One special thing. 
And that thing is... Mountain wart. I'll give you two for that. <laughs> Ooh, push the boat out. Uh, but, yeah, why mountain wart? It's pretty. Adds a nice burst of color to my pile here. Okay, do you have anything for sale? Did I mention some people call me one glowstone guy? Well, I've got two nicknames around here. The other thing people call me is 500 glowstone guy. I only ever have one item for sale at a time, and I only sell anything for one price. Guess how much? Uh, 500 glowstones? 500 glowstones. Ah. And what is that one item that you are selling right now? Sealant. Why sealant? See, I like to buy things and hold on to them. At any given time, there's always one thing that everyone needs and nobody has. And I just make sure I happen to have it. Right now, that thing is sealant. The woodworkers need it for weatherproofing, the engineers need it for pipe making, and the fisher folk need it for boat building. Apparently, the shipment that was coming ran a reef, which is just the kind of news I like to hear. I see. yeah I was I was there yeah. Oh were you now? That was yeah. your ship, huh? Yeah. Well, I'm very glad you made it, and I'm very glad the cargo didn't. Would you like to buy some sealant? It'll be 500 glowstones. We do need sealant to make a raft, apparently, and I think a, pr a raft we need to get to at least to that inn in the middle of the lake. But the price is outrageous. Is there any other way? Hmm. There's only one thing I want that I can't seem to get. But I'm not sure you can help. Try me. I want to get into that fancy club, The Roots. They're ah. such exclusive little buggers. I need the password to get in. Ah. No idea who to talk to about that. Get me that password, and I'll give you the sealant. Ah. I see. Well, I shall be back, because I need sealant. Right, we're getting close to the time where it's going to be freezing cold. So we're going to make our way back up to where we've come from. Can we nick these? Save our goddess. Eradicate the enemy. The cultist, cultists, known as the Roots, promotes questionable activity and waste of holy leaves. The actions contribute to an unsafe city and risk invoking the wrath of our beloved Beloved goddess, report cultists. It's a cult. There is a cult in this game. Are you kidding me? Right, we need to get back to um, the inn. We shall explore the rest of the city tomorrow, I think. Oh, music! But it's seven o'clock, which means there's also music in the tavern. So I'll be uh, I'll be leaving you behind now, Mr. Street uh, Musician. No offence. Is this the music in? Yeah, the tarnished teapot. Yeah, where's your music? Music maestro. Where are where, where's where's the music? I feel like we're missing out here. Welcome to the inn below the tarnished teapot. The inn below the tarnished teapot. Mm, correct. That is the name. We once had another name, but everyone just called us that inn below the tarnished teapot. I don't really blame them. This place is a bit of a dump. The manager has really let it go. Who's the manager? Me. <laughs> I see. It's kind of like a club. People go under the city to drink dream teas, relax, unwind. It used to be open for everyone, but it's pretty locked down now. Some folks have been trying to destroy or steal their tea plants. So they had to get real protective. There was a dream party out on the Salt Spring coast a few nights ago. Who knows? Maybe you can make the right connections. 
and get a chance to try some. Okay. I used to live on the mainland years ago. Working as a bricklayer was terrible. Hated every minute. Then my grandma died, bless her soul, and left me a sum. Quit my job that day and got the first ship here. For no reason in particular. Just wanted to leave. Bought this dumpy floor for dirt cheap. Didn't really know what I was doing. Now this city's a boom town and I'm living off the reverse mortgage. Just goes to show, act impulsively and sometimes you get rich. That's what I've learned anyway. Oh, and have some inheritance. Good grief. What a oh. chirpy fellow. Can we can we actually order by a room? You sure? We have rats. Oh, you're really selling it to me. If you really want, first door on your left. Two glowstones. Oh. First door on the left, right, okay. Well this guy is full of the joys of spring, isn't he? Good grief. But the teapot's upstairs, so that's where the music must be. So let's go check it out. Hopefully a bit more uplifting than down here. Like a damn morgue, man. Ah, the heart root. Hopefully we're not too late. Gather round. Come here, tale of trickery and wit. There oh. was once a witch who lived in a tiny hut at the edge of a swamp. Life performance. She was skilled in the healing arts and could cure nearly any ailment. Though she had many visitors, her truest companions were a cluster of spiders living under her table. One day, a man ambled up the path and knocked upon her door. You must be the wise witch Flera, curer of all ills. He looked around the hut with a sneer. People cross the world for your cures, and yet you live in this terrible shack. Surely folks pay dearly for the chance to continue breathing. But Flara was not one for glowstones, and she quite liked her home. She only stiffened and asked what his ailment was. So he told her of the terrible pains and aches he suffered, horrible scratching in his toenails, in each strand of hair, and in his tear ducts. Ard was a torture like none other, but he'd heard of the cure, only to be found in the swamp near her home. The only way to ease his pain? The heart root. Well, in all her years of saving lives, Flera had never heard of such a root, but the Borg wasn't so treacherous, and she had gone in many times for lesser cures. So, she agreed to find the heart root, and the man agreed to wait in her hut. Flara trudged through the swamp, thick with slime and the stinking air heavy with rot. When she came to a clearing of black clay, she thrust her hands into the wet muck, but alas, nothing. She dug for hours, her back aching and fingernails packed with mud. Finally, just as twilight fell to darkness, she found it. A spiral green tuber, pulsing and glowing like a star. She lifted the root, heavy with swamp water, and slid it into her bag. Not a moment later, something rustled in the shadows. A tiny silhouette showed itself beside her. Have stolen from me. That route is not yours to take. It hissed. The witch could just make out the sight of a moss elf, staring up at her in fury. She told him of the ailing man and the power of the strange root. But the moss elf only grew more angry and stamped his feet in the swampy muck. It's a root of poison and destruction, he screeched. It cannot yell anything! I curse you! I curse you to remain in this bog forever! 
and he snatched the root from her bag before darting back into the night. Flora's path melted away, replaced by a ring of identical tree trunks, branches crisscrossing, weaving a cage around her. Roots churned under her feet, and a bone-chilling mist draped itself over the bog. Flora sat down on a tree trunk and got to thinking, wondering about the man who had sent her in hunt of the root. Had he known the truth? Had he wanted to use it for evil? No way to tell. So she set to trying to remember if anyone had ever broken a Marcel curse. Just then, she felt a tickling down her arm and her leg. She fought the urge to swipe, and if it wasn't her own spiders, they brought terrible news. The supposedly ailing man had taken over Flara's hut, demanding riches and luxuries from the ill in exchange for false medicines. He'd thrown out her furniture and dumped the spiders into the rain, threatening to stop them if they snuck back in. Now, it is often forgotten that spiders know an awful lot about a lot of things. With so many eyes and a knack for spinning tails, it's a natural skill. They knew exactly how to break a moss elf curse and set to spinning huge lacy webs, making a cocoon of the forest. They hummed softly, and when Flara cut through the silk, she was at the edge of the bog, her hut just up ahead. Laborers surrounded her home, painting and scraping, her precious herbs crushed beneath their feet. She peered through the window, and there was the man sitting upon a throne, and beside him, a large pile of jewels and glowstones. Flara burst through the door, and he jumped halfway to the sun. You've taken too much. There are hundreds of jewels before me, and not a one do you deserve. You haven't enough hands to even carry these riches, you snake. You snake. Now the spiders thought this was quite a funny idea, so they hummed again, and the man sprouted hundreds of hands, and his body grew long and snake-like. He shrunk smaller and smaller before slinking under the door and out into the bog. And so, you've now heard the tale of how centipedes came to be. What? I've got to say, I'm di a bit disappointed with the ending there. <laughs> I, must, I must admit. And that, folks, is how, how centipedes came to be. What? I don't want to know about centipedes. Ooh, what's this? Huh? Oh my god, this is quite strange but soothing. Come on, can we get the balls out of the pot? Oh yeah, almost! What the hell is it supposed to do? It's, it's quite good fun, that though. <laughs> Shall I nick your candle from your candlelit dinner? I think I won't bother. No, it's a bit rude, isn't it? It's got a bit dark. It's a bit dark in here. Right, well, if we're ever in Narva tomorrow night, we shall come back to see what the second day's tale is. I'm hoping for a bit of live music, to be fair, but uh, anywho. Good day to you all. Good day, good day. It's good fun, good fun. So we had a bit of play, playing with some silver balls and a tale about a centipede. Just another day in Narva, apparently.
I'll have your candle for compensation. The beds are nice though, four poster and everything. And there's a bedtime book as well. Explorer's Guide to the Tiffmore Bluffs. I think I shall be leaving you shortly. Uh, the remote Tiffmore Bluffs are a well-enjoyed destination for East Shadians. The bluffs were once filled with bustle following the industrious wind power boom. Today, that excitement has settled and travellers are now greeted by the gentle turning of windmills. Fields of endless herbs lure wild crafters to the area and those knowing where to look may even view the remains of ancient ruins in the landscape. Anyone exploring the region should be sure to pick, uh, pack a coat or supply of mead to protect against the freezing winds swept upon the bluffs at night. For extra enjoyment, be sure to bring a tea kettle to take advantage of the many herbs growing on this wonderful land. So there's a clue about what we can do to keep ourselves warm at night. So we've got the, um, we've got the mead. Now they sold mead um, in the Lindo Inn, didn't they? That, that mead. So that could be uh, sticky taffy pudding. Oh, chicken. Oh, delicious, delicious, delicious. Well, I, I, as I say, my, I am going downstairs very shortly. My mother has just called, said, Are you ready? I'm hungry now, she said. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I think this is a good place to pretty much end it. Uh, I'll, pick up the food. I'll probably pick on the Discord. Um, right, so that's a clue as to what we can do to, to help ourselves keep warm, possibly. Drink some mead. Warms the cockles. We're going to rest until six. Or near enough to it. If we can. Although I didn't recall being able to buy any stuff from this inn. Let me, before I go to bed, let me just see. Just double check here. Can we buy any food stuffs here? Welcome. R like a room. No. Could oh. we buy anything? I don't think we could buy anything from upstairs. Which makes no sense. This is like the biggest... This is the biggest inn in the, in the area. Two floors, live entertainment, but you can't buy a drink. Doesn't make any sense, does it? We must be able to talk with the barkeeper, surely. No? Bartender? No. Bartender? You don't do anything? It's a bit strange. No. Okay, bed it is then, till 6 p. Uh, 6 a.m. 6.01 to be precise, because I don't like round numbers. If you really love a particular painting you made, you should keep it for yourself. Good advice, oh my god, good advice. Right, I may be back tomorrow, or this evening rather, there's lots to do. And uh, there you go, you see. So I'm going to end it right here, to be fair, because it's a decent place to end. The start of a new day, lots to do. So we've got to explore the rest of Narva. We've got to go up into this tower and maybe take a, take a painting, make a painting for our little homage to our mother. There's all the buildings to have a look at. We've got to play Cupid for the baker over here. We've got to find two more people that have bought poisonous tubers. Um, and yeah, just, just generally explore the town or the city, if you want to call it that, of Narva. We're going to deliver our great pastries. Our prank is not yet complete. So there's a few little bits for us to finish off here uh, in the next session. So I look forward to that. But uh, i got to tell you something. Obviously, this is the first time I've sat down and played this game for a decent length of time. It's, it's fantastic, isn't it? I really am enjoying it immensely, this game. The views are great. It's just, it's, it's lovely. There's something different just to explore and walk around and just do a few little odds and ends. It's, it's been really enjoyable. So, yes, it is time for Buffet. So, uh, enjoy your weeks. The next stream will be midweek, possibly, uh, where I will finish off um, the... 
Do not feed the monkeys game. And if we actually finish it early, because I don't think there's long left, if we do finish it early, I might throw some more of this in. But, uh, yeah. Thank you for watching this evening. It's been fun. Really enjoying this game so far. I'm looking forward to playing some more. Have a good week. And until next time, see you soon.